Eating out on the first date is my idea of a good time, but sometimes we need to be more romantic than ordering in and watching a movie. That's why in this series called The First Date Night, we'll be cooking some of the best first date night meal ideas. Kind of like Jack Dawson. I'm not rich, but I got game. So I'm going to light this pumpkin spice candle to set the mood and we can begin. I said certified freak. There's something about a big slab of meat that gets the appetite going. So tonight we're going to make the T-bone steak, along with mashed potato and asparagus for our sides. The T-bone is one of my personal favorites because it's got the best of both worlds. Tenderloin on one end and strip loin on the other. See how nice this looks? I don't drive a Porsche, so I have to impress her with more expensive cuts. To start, we're going to aggressively salt and pepper both sides of the steak and seasoning the edges by rubbing it onto the board just like this. Really make sure the meat is nice and covered, then we'll set it aside to reach room temperature. For our mash, I'm going to be using two russet potatoes, also known as baking potato, and we're going to stick them in the oven on 400 for about 45 minutes. I like doing it this way because I don't have to cut and boil them with Ain't nobody got time for that! Which leaves the mash very moist, just like my date right now who's watching me put this masterpiece together. And it'll also give me time to prepare the asparagus. Once you can effortlessly slide your fork inside them, they are finished. And we can start by giving them a cross section. With your fingers, we're going to squeeze them out into a bowl like this. They're still steaming hot, but this is no time to be a wimp. Use your fork to scrape out the edges of the potato. That's where all the flavor is. I made the part up. It tastes the exact same. However, you should probably use a spoon here. Once it's all in the bowl, we're going to add a knob of butter. And tonight I'm going with heavy cream, which is going to make them very rich and possibly put your date to sleep. That's not always a bad thing. Season with some S&P, then add some chives for a hint of onion flavor. But not so much that will smell like one after. So we're going to mix it all up and give it a taste. Lastly, we're going to make our asparagus. I wasn't sure what to say here, so I used ChatGPT to explain why it's nice alongside the steak. 1. Contrasting textures. Asparagus has a crisp and slightly tender texture, which contrasts nicely with the often tender and juicy nature of a well-cooked steak. 2. Balanced flavors. Asparagus has a mildly earth and slightly bitter flavor, which can balance the richness and savory flavors of the steak. 3. Color and presentation. It's green and it looks nice on the plate. 4. Nutritional balance. We're going to remove the hard woody part of the asparagus in a diagonal fashion, then lay them on our baking sheet. We'll lubricate them with avocado oil, and I season them with salt, pepper, and some garlic powder. We're then going to broil for 5-10 to 10 minutes or until crispy golden brown. Make sure you're to keep an eye on anything you set on broil because they can burn real quick. Once they come out of the oven, they should look like this. Now with our mash and asparagus getting cozy in the warm oven, I'm going to remove the peels from the garlic, and I'll add some grass-fed ghee to my cast iron pan. We want that pan to be smoking hot so we can get a nice sear on the T-bone. Here's some rare ASMR on my video so you can hear the sound we're looking for when it claps the pan. After a couple of minutes we're going to flip and see how it looks. After flipping I'm going to slightly reduce the heat, add my garlic, a Gordon Ramsay sized knob of butter, Tiny knob of butter, tiny knob of butter, tiny knob of butter. And some fresh thyme on top to give it that extra zhuzh. And we're going to spoon hot butter on it over and over again for a couple minutes until it's finished. I'm going to sear off the sides and we're going to let it rest for at least 5-10 to 10 minutes so all those juices absorb nicely. I'm no expert or anything but this looks like second base to me. After our steaks rested for about 5-10 to 10 minutes, I'm going to just take over some leftover sauce from the pan, drizzle it over my mashed potato and my steak. And then we're going to cut into it and give it a taste test. Oh, we're going there. Oh. We've managed to cook it a perfect medium rare. The steak is super tender and juicy. The mashed potatoes are rich and fluffy. And Chad GPT was right. The asparagus does add a nice crunchy texture to it. Also, to boost your chances tonight with the um, steak, of course, we're going to have a nice glass of red wine.
and we don't want to come off too hard and also make dessert but a little dark chocolate will do the trick here i got some pimente chili dark chocolate any chocolate will do fine but don't do something like mr beast or o henry we want to keep that romantic vibe going all right guys if we ever find a date i think this is a very good start and if it doesn't work out you at least learn how to cook a perfectly nice steak all right guys thank you for watching if you've got any ideas for a good first date night dinner please let me know in the comments below and i'll see you guys very soon my head game is fire punani dasani it's going in dry and it's coming out soggy